Hold on, Good hold morning. On. Hi, guys. Mm -mm. Good morning, and welcome to Morning Joe. Mm -hmm. Alabama plays today, Day. Willie. Is that Adam Clayton? Basically? Alabama plays For Clemson Alabama. today. Uh, Joe, they don't get the joke. Yeah, hold on. Alabama plays Clemson today. Okay, that's you think good. Alabama's going to win? I like the I like the tide. I like it's the tide. Part three in the trilogy yeah. of their series. What were you pointing at, Joe? Recorded earlier. Mika. Okay, but to be I clear, I didn't want to confuse anybody. But well, Alabama is playing tonight, unless there, there was a nuclear attack right in North Korea right. but from the time we recorded this too. You right can have now. more Cheetos now. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. And then you can blog. Roll Tide. With us, we have national affairs analyst for NBC News and MSNBC. Uh, John Heilman, also former White House press secretary to President Obama. Josh Ernest. Josh, you wore that on Christmas. He Happy did. New Year, everybody. Uh, <laughs> Susan. Susan. And Republican strategist what? and political. You wore that on Christmas. I know. And the week, and the week before. Here. All right, so let's talk about what said for 2018. Uh, oh, my God. John Heilman, we start with you. Conflict. Okay, that's good. I like that. What? Conflict? What type conflict. of conflict? Um, you know, uh, well, look, I think there, there, you're going to have, uh, I, I keep coming back to that, what I consider the existential crisis facing the Trump administration. The Mueller probe uh, is going to come to a head in 2018, right. and, and we're going to find out whether or not Bob Mueller is going to, uh, is going to get to the bottom of the two major tracks of the investigation. Well, the question of whether there's collusion with Russia in the 2016 election, uh, what, the, what the, we're getting to the bottom of the relationship between Putin and Trump, and on the other hand, the obstruction of justice charges that a lot of people think are pending uh, against the president. And I, I, I think that the politics of that, in addition to the, the, the legal track, you've also got a situation where as this thing plays out over the course of the year, increasingly I think the question of the ability to impeach, if necessary, the president, will become central to our politics. Yeah. That argument in the midterms, right. Republicans who are uh, certainly on the House side, which is where the action would be, are essentially signaling in a very direct way that they have no intention of taking seriously any charges that Mueller might bring and uh, certainly not moving to impeachment. But we're going to hear throughout I, 2018, if you elect Democrats, they're going to impeach Or, or at least that, Or at least that they'll be open to the idea that if, that if Bob Mueller presents claims... Oh, no, claims, they'll impeach Trump. Well, well they, may, they very well may, but I think you, that, that is going to be a central argument. And Nancy fr Pelosi will be telling Democrats, wow. don't say the I word. The, yes, correct. And I think, but I think the framing of a referendum on the question of the possibility of impeachment will be central to the midterm But elections. you know, Willie, as, we, as, as the new year ended and we started getting news that Don McGahn uh, reportedly knew. Knew about what had been going on with Michael Flynn, that he had violated the law, which means the president knew when he was going to James Comey, telling him, hey, kill this investigation. We also know that Michael Flynn got a sweetheart deal from uh, the special prosecutor. So there are some things, a lot of things we don't know, but there also are some things that we do know. That's right. If Bob Mueller is fired, people are going to go to jail they are going to be charged at the state level, and, and people like Michael Flynn will probably spend the rest of his life behind bars. Well, we saw, we got a barometer at the end of 2017 for how concerned both the White House and congressional Republicans are about what Bob Mueller is working on. This assault on Bob Mueller, this assault on the FBI that we saw in the Judiciary Committee, we saw it on the Intel Committee. You had the chairman of the Intel Committee, Devin Nunez, running this sort of parallel operation right. to look into the FBI, to look into Bob Mueller. They are obviously concerned. I think it's just a question of when Bob Mueller delivers his product. He's in no rush. He's in no rush. He will do his work. Is it the beginning of this year? Is it later in the year? They said it could be the end of 2018. We will see, but that will be hanging over everything else that happens in Washington. Bob Mueller's in no rush. Bob Mueller does not care. And Susan, I think people will look back, maybe even six, nine months from now, and look back at the timing at the Republican attacks from the House, which we had Bob Corker on last week, and he, he mocked, basically mocked the House, saying nobody in the Senate's even saying that. But we'll look back, and, and people will ask, wait a second, these Republicans in the House waited until a national security advisor was, was charged with a crime and pled to a crime, and the president's campaign manager was charged with a crime, and then they started attacking the person that discovered these crimes going on? in the government? Yeah, and, and we already know as of the end of 2017, there were four indictments by Robert Mueller. He is moving on an investigation that through the year, and we don't know the timing when it will conclude, but I think it will be towards the end. 
that there are a lot of other people that are going to go down in this mess. There's no doubt. There, you, he's just getting going, I think, on, on the higher level people he's going to reach. And this is going to be a place where I think the American public, who are really want to rally around something that is meaningful, that's bipartisan, that they can, and that's our legal and justice system. And they will get around Bob Mueller, and they will throw those Congress members who dare question his integrity out on their ear because this very well could be the year of the primary. So, uh, Josh, um, as we talk about primaries and general elections, 2018, most people at the end of 2017, almost everybody I've, I, I've heard talk on this topic are predicting a huge Democratic win in 2018. It's mm -hmm. enough to make you think that it's going to be a great year for Republicans. Well, it, this is still a steep climb for Democrats because it's not just about yeah. the number of seats in the House they have to retake. It's the fact that they're going to have to retake a number of gerrymandered districts in order to uh, be in the majority once again. The other thing I think that we should not overlook about these midterm elections are the consequential governor's races that are on the ballot, too. 34 governor's races are on the ballot uh, in 2018. The vast majority, just about every one of those governors, with the, I think with the exception of New Hampshire, will be in office when their states are considering redistricting. So we're talking about a midterm election that is not just consequential in terms of the remainder of, of, of President Trump's first term in office. We're actually talking about the next decade uh, of control of, uh, of the United States Congress. So this is a consequential election. And I think the question is going to be, will Democrats remain fired up? Can they stay engaged? And can Democrats continue to succeed in persuading moderate Republicans, college-educated Republicans, that Republicans have lost their way? I think there's plenty of evidence to back up that argument, but can they succeed in making that argument and motivating those that brand of Republicans to show up at the polls and support Democratic candidates, including Democratic governors in the upcoming election? So, Mika, you, for two years, uh, <clears throat> you you, you've had nasty things tweeted at you by the president mm -hmm. uh, and um, the White House. Uh, you, you've, you've faced attacks and conservative media. It's almost enough to make you forget just how, how and it's such how, how badly you were viewed by Hillary Clinton. <sighs> And Democrats, Democratic women coming up to you all the time asking what's wrong with you. Why are you so anti-Hillary? Mm. Why are you so anti-Democratic Party? And you kept saying they don't have a message. They don't have a message. What's their message? So I ask you at the beginning of 2018, you have some Democrats that are watching right now. What does their message need to be? What do they need to do that you complained for two years that Hillary Clinton was not doing? I'm not going to tell them what their message needs to be, but I will tell them it needs to be an honest one. It can't be a hypocritical one, especially on issues like sexual harassment, especially since uh, these are the same Democrats, many of them, who stood right there for Hillary Clinton and supported Bill Clinton every step of the way. You can't do that. You can't have it both ways. We have to be honest that this society is evolving. Democrats need to be honest that they want a big tent as well. And they have to address the needs of not just our diverse society, but all Americans who are hurting, especially the middle class, the lower middle class, and those who are uh, working for minimum wage, they have to have a genuine, honest uh, message that is uh, led by someone or a group of people who actually are, have the skills to deliver that message. And that's a tall order. I wouldn't get, uh, I, I wouldn't get too happy. Uh, about the situation now because I think anything goes in the midterms. People may not feel the effects of the tax cuts that the Republican, uh, Republican Congress got through because it may not be enough time. And quite frankly, um, I think that anything goes in 2018. I think we've all talked about a best case scenario, but this president has pushed the boundaries of moral decorum on every level and pushed the boundaries of democracy, and I am concerned the system will not hold if we're not careful. And so, in terms of the midterms, I'm hoping it's the year of the woman. Mm -hmm. well, I really, yeah. I really do. Just picking up on both what you said, Mika, and what Josh said, I'll be interested to see if that Democratic energy we saw in Virginia and Alabama makes it all the way to 2018. If the energy that started with the women's march is right after President Trump was sworn into office, Virginia if that election. continues through Virginia and Alabama, 
Alabama is an interesting case. We saw African American turnout that I think the night before none of us expected Nobody, to see, which was yeah. at levels of President Obama in 2008 in an off year special election. African Americans energized to go out and vote. Suburban women, suburban Republicans who came and voted in Mountain Brook, where we mm -hmm. were that day, came out and voted for a Democrat. The question for me is was that because Roy Moore was so distasteful? Or was that about some other energy about Donald Trump or some combination of the well, two? So if Luther Strange had been on the ballot, mm -hmm. would those suburban Republicans have voted for Luther Strange and not the Democrat? Mm -hmm. Right. And, if, well, I'm sorry, because I, mean, I, I think the other question is, is what are Democrats going to do to have their own proactive message in all of this, right? right? And, I, and I do think that, that President Trump and there are going to be more Roy Moores in 2018. There are going to be... Uh, crazy people who are running on the Republican side who do likely win primaries. And that is going to fuel some Democratic turnout and some Democratic enthusiasm and energy. But Democrats are also going to need to capital, uh, center on an own message, on their own message, uh, that does succeed in getting people motivated and energized. So they're not just voting against something, but they're also voting for something as well. Uh, and that's and also going to be an important part of But we're also going to see something that's going to be very challenging for Democrats and Republicans. And that is the slew more, I have a very strong feeling, of, of members of the House and Senate that are probably going to have to resign or not seek re-election because of sexual harassment. That $17 that million secret fund will become exposed. More importantly, campaign committees will be looked at and where those payoffs are going. And for Nancy Pelosi especially, because she oversaw most of the, she was there in power during most of those payoffs, that's going to be extremely problematic for the Democrats to have to explain where that $17 million went. Let's just, well, let's just not forget that there's, you know, that we look back historically midterm elections are bad for the party that's in that holds the White House historically if a president's below 50 percent in approval rating the op the opposing party does really really well I think terms. everything's up this president's down. below 40 and not a little below 40 a lot below 40 there's no modeling for that there's never been a president and, and the generic ballot and the passed. generic ballots that uh, the Democrats have a du double digit lead in some cases higher a little bit above a double digit lead in the generic ballot test so the numbers right now the history suggests that this should be despite the gerrymandering despite the map in the Senate if you look at what happened in 2018 or in 2017 and you look at all the historical precedents this should be a really big year for Democrats unless they blow it in some profound uh, way that, that signifies Which a degree of political we, malpractice. We God knows Democrats have been uh, guilty of political malpractice. Well, they, in the past. Well, we they saw it in the last election. Like, they certainly were in 2006. They, cer they certainly were. They, they worked they overtime. Sort of, and that's but, but, the, but the circumstances are prime for them. If, if they cannot take control, at least of the House under these circumstances, they should probably hang it up. And people will say that the tax cut is maybe a mitigating factor in that, but you remember in 1982, even after mm -hmm. the Reagan tax cut of 81. That's right. Republicans got wiped out in 82. And yeah. the tax cut begins with extraordinary levels of unpopularity. Right. Again, now it might get more popular as the year goes by, but that's going to be up again to Democrats to prosecute the case. They start with the tax cut being enormously unpopular. They just have to keep driving that message and not let it not let Republicans turn it around. But they're starting from the right place from the Democratic point of view. And what Republicans need to push, Josh, is the economy. It's doing well. Unemployment is low. And uh, stock market's at an all-time high. Your 401 one K's are doing better than ever before and they need to keep pushing that. Um, I will say as we go into 2018 though for one, one word of warning for Republicans, um, the economy was pretty darn great in 1994 and Bill Clinton got wiped out. 2010, things were starting to turn around. 2014, the economy was doing much, much better. Republicans won the Senate in 2014. The Tea Party took over in 2010. These midterm elections uh, disprove uh, James Carville's famous saying, it's the economy stupid. That may be the case in presidential years and, and time of, times of economic change. It has not proven to be the case at all. In midterm elections. Yeah, look, I, it is the thing that Republicans are pinning their hope to, right? That to hope that people are going to be persuaded by a, a strong economy to keep them in office and keep them doing their thing, whatever that happens to be. Uh, but you know, the other challenge that Democrats face, though, John, and this is something that is also uh, a challenge that my party has not solved, is Democrats don't historically turn out well in midterm elections, uh, and that is uh, that is something that we're going to have to figure out, and that is going to be part of uh, of working through uh, the challenge that we face. 
base. And look, the results in Alabama and Virginia obviously uh, give Democrats a lot of hope that Democrats are engaged in a way that they haven't been before. Uh, but historically, the trends in midterm elections do favor the party that's out of power. But midterm elections have historically not favored Democrats uh, because uh, we've had trouble uh, Dem motivating Dem our Democrats have a great motivator in 2018. Uh, His name is Donald Trump. Yes, yes. All That's right, true. still yeah. ahead on Morning Show, a look back at the year that was in Trump tweets. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> that head spinning compilation is next. Hey, do you think you're going to be in there? I think I might. I don't know. Yeah. It wasn't that important. Plus, the definitive yeah, timeline of a Trump Russia connection. We'll be right back. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.